Okay, today we will show the examination of the vital signs. Really, the vital signs examination consists of uh, blood pressure measurements, radial pulse assessment, respiratory rate assessment, temperature, and lastly, pulse oximetry. We will show these uh, measurements and sequences. First of all, I'll check the blood pressure. In the blood pressure measurement, the patient should be seated comfortably for at least five minutes. And we have to ensure that the patient hadn't taken any cigarette smoking, tea or coffee for at least 30 minutes prior to assessment. Assessment in one side should be followed by assessment of the uh, contralateral side. That's to say, first of all, measure at the right side and then at the left side, taking the highest reading of them. And uh, there may be a difference in the systolic blood pressure of about less than 10 millimeter, which is normal variant, but the highest reading is taken. And those who are, who are younger than 35 years, one should also measure the blood pressure and the legs. And those who are elderly, who had any stigma of autonomy dysfunction or suspect that uh, they are having hypovolemia, uh, the examiner or the candidate should also uh, should measure the blood pressure in the supine position and also in the standing position, searching for postural hypotension. First of all, I'll check the blood pressure in the right side. The sphygmomanometer really at the heart level. I'll ensure, first of all, I'll ensure the place of the brachial pulse. This is the site of the brachial pulse. This is the brachial pulse. And also, I'll check for the radial pulse for its patency. Then, I'll encircle the sphygmomanometer cuff and I'll raise the blood pressure till the radial pulse became or becomes impalpable now the radial pulse become impalpable I'll raise the column about 30 millimeter mercury and then I'll listen via the stethoscope over the right brachial artery I'll slowly deflate 2 millimeter each time till I I get now the first cord cough sound and to ensure that this is the this is the first cord cough sound and no ascultatory gap I'll check also again the radial pulse which should be palpable now the radial pulse is palpable so this is definitely the systolic blood pressure then I'll deflate also slowly each time about two millimeter the sound is muffled first and then disappear now the blood pressure sound is disappear which correspond to diastolic blood pressure so the systolic blood pressure was at 130 millimeter mercury and the diastolic blood pressure was 70 5 millimeter mercury. Blood pressure should also be repeated after uh, a period of uh, about 5 minutes and then repeated on the left side. Highest reading is taken and uh, after that, if the patient is young, as I said previously, the blood pressure should be taken also at the, at, at the legs and the upper limb and if the patient suspects to have autonomic dysfunction, hypovolemia or is elderly, one should also measure the supine and standing blood pressure. All these issues are about the blood pressure measurements.